Hey everybody, welcome to the Tie-Dye Mindset. This is Greg Foster interviewing another legend in the world of tie-dye. Well, you know, people take that moniker kind of seriously. So I, I really consider Forrest Lee here to have some of the most visually stunning color work out there. And I was really, really excited when we got connected and uh, he was willing to come on and, and be subject to my interview strategies. <laughs> Uh, really just to bring you guys into the mindset of another accomplished artist that has some great technique and, and some opinions on, on uh, tie-dye and uh, hopefully we'll get uh, get some great stuff here hopefully for the next who knows half hour hour two and a half hours we'll see how long it takes us to get through some great stuff but Forrest thank you so much for coming on super excited to talk to you today like I said you you really um uh, when I started getting into the kind of social side of tie-dye through Instagram and Facebook, when your images would pop up, I was just mesmerized and intrigued by some of your spirals and, and really how you have taken dye placement and dye integration on the fabric really to a next uh, level in, a, in such a unique way that is... Uh, very, very captivating. I know I've tried personally to emulate your work with without much success, um, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm not going to keep trying because that's really what this art form is all about is trying. So again, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it is really a pleasure to have you. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Forrest, you might know his handle is Ananda Dyes. Uh, and if you don't recognize the tapestry behind him, uh, you should see his t-shirts. They're very much similar to a lot of that in style and just really, really great. So I'll stop talking for a second and say, Forrest, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, thanks for your patience on, on me getting around to, to ending up on the show. <laughs> no problem. Last time we tried to do this interview, we, uh, we ran into some technical glitches and uh, good thing that we have patience as it, as it takes in tie-dye to, to kind of work through those. But Forrest, again, stupid excited uh, to have you here. Um, and, you know, a lot of the people who started viewing these, these interviews have really found that getting into the mindset or understanding more of who the artist's they see posting and, and are out there who they are really and 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 want to get more insight. Of course, technique is something entirely different. And those are, you know, I think for the tutorial side, that's not my aim here. Um, okay. So why don't you start us off with uh, really, you know, what got you into tie-dye? Um, what keeps you in tie-dye? And, you know, what do you see for the for the future for, for Forrest? Well, thanks for having me here. Hey, everybody. Um, honored to be in the group of people you've had on your show. It, you got definitely uh, a lot of the folks that have inspired me over the years. So thanks for including me. That means a lot. Um, you know, I started tie dyeing uh, not too look really seriously um, just about a year and a half, a little less than two years ago. Um, you know, like anybody, I'd love tie dye. I'd been inspired by other artists, but it was just a time issue but uh i was working on other i had a non-profit that i ran and and my full-time job is i care for my son who's got some illness so that's a constant theme in my life and it'll probably come up as we talk because it's a big part of my who i am and how i see the world you know is our, our struggles with him uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and how i got into tie-dye was really i needed an outlet um for my art and I've always been a creative person in, in one way or another. Uh, you can see, I didn't set this up. My office is just cluttered, but it's, <laughs> you know, for years. And as my son got sicker, I wasn't able to do that. And as, as his condition progressed, I was able to do less and less. And instead of um, feeling sorry for myself, and I, I did plenty of that too, but that's part of the process is I learned that, this wasn't changing anything. It was just making me miserable. I wanted to find new outlets and fabric dyeing, shibori, uh, tie dye is something that I've been a fan of. And I just, when I dive into something, I put every part of my being into it. Mm -hmm. And one day I was like, I'm going to, I want to study, not just do, I 
if I want to study fabric dyeing and tie dye in particular. And um, it went from, you know, thinking about it to every day since doing about eight to 12 hours a day of it. <laughs> because it's something I can do in my home and it's still care for my son. So right. uh, I don't have another nine to five. So that's also why people probably say, how'd you progress so fast? Well, I wouldn't wish my situation on people, but some of the benefits are I'm, I'm home all the time. So I'm able to just, anytime I'm not caring for him, I'm thinking about tie-dye, doing tie-dye, practicing, studying, uh, et cetera. So it's been an amazing outlet for me. And it really, that's what it is. It's not a, didn't start as a business. I didn't start to plan on selling things. I started as wanting to scratch that itch that I have in everything that I do, which is I want to challenge myself. I want to push myself to the limits and I want to take an art form of some kind and see if I can push it to limits. That's what gets me going, whether it's music or painting or anything um, is the challenge for myself and the art form itself. And um, I found tie dye to be the perfect one of the perfect art forms for that because it's easy for beginners to, you know, start on day one and make something colorful, you know, and make something beautiful and bring joy to your life. And as easy as it is to do something great, it has equal amount of depth and complexity when it comes to technique. Mm -hmm. And so from grandma and mom and sister coming over and spraying some dye on a shirt and having fun, to the ultra obsessive, which is where I think some of the folks on your podcast fall in. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> There's no end to how far you can go down that uh, rabbit hole. So it's it's just been perfect for me because even with everything I've done in, in the short time that I've really given 100% to the process, uh, I haven't done 10% of what I want to do or try yet. I mean, barely scratched the surface. And, and that to me is 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 a gift for sure you know um there are a few things in there some really good nuggets that i think uh the audience really can identify with i know i can um with um you know fast progression um isn't necessarily about uh i think your ability to do a good fan fold or or learn the the super spiral really quick it it, it like you said it's dedication and and figuring out the little uh, twists and nooks and crannies of uh, change and the specifics. Um, and it takes dedication. You know, it takes a lot of time to figure a lot of that stuff out become, before you become really proficient. You know, um, I would still consider myself maybe, I would say, an upper level intermediate versus someone on, you know, your category, you know, your, your category of, of expertise. Um, but I don't have, you know, the time to commit to it. If I had eight to 10 hours a day to do Todd, I dude, not only would I be in absolute heaven and, but hell at the same time with my arthritis, but it would just be great to be able to, you know, have, you know, in a short time, have this catalog to see that progression. Um, and, you know, the sort of shortcoming I find in, in this community is we get a lot of people out there, and I'm not going to say I'm, I'm free of guilt on this, is, you know, you get that sort of taste for the results, you know, of putting some time in, you've watched a few tutorials, and, and you've figured out, oh my gosh, I can make a really pretty spiral, or I can make a cool design, and it, it's visually appealing, and people are asking me about it, and maybe they want to buy some. And trying to go from that, that, that maybe upper level beginner and just jump to, oh, well, you know, so-and-so taught me, I watched the tutorials and I read how to do such and such a style. Why aren't my results like, you know, uh, a Josh Cohen or a Forrest Lee or, or any of these things where it's like, um, you know, well, I know how to do a, a Kenny style, but it's not amazing. Like Thomas or Paul, <laughs> you know, it's, it's. There's a lot between learning a technique and knowing a technique, I think. Um, and you are very much uh, in that class of shifting from um, learning a technique and really knowing, like you said, pushing the upper limits 
of a technique and the, and it shows in your work it shows you know i was watching a live stream you were doing the other night that started with justin and thomas came in and you were doing a little bit of dying here and you showed some pieces that you had died and i'm just like holy cow this guy knows how to apply dye in a way uh you know could it be the dye water the the type of fat you know there are so many facets um that i think just a tutorial you don't pick you don't pick up you know unless you've got a, a master kind of sitting next to you directing your hands you're never going to learn on your own without going without going through it um yeah absolutely and it's uh, uh, one of those things that I find uh, compelling about tie dye for me is um, in my own sort of OCD ness, I've I've learned to allow um, those mistakes or those less than results um, push me in the right direction, kind of nudge me back to say rather than say, oh, I suck and I couldn't do it. It's like oh, I see where I could have changed this and it'll do that. I'm at that point now where I can see visually what I did and how I can apply a different technique to get a different result. Um, so yeah, and looking at your stuff is, is a great example of like, if I look hard enough, I can kind of see the, the difference in placement that, that'll really help and uh, um, you know really push me in the right direction. But I could go on and on. We're here about you. <laughs> I, think, I think you make a good point. I mean, I think a lot of people want to know what the secret is. And I talk about this in my streams. You know, I stream mostly because I'm lonely. <laughs> you sit there for hours and my son's <laughs> watching SpongeBob and I can't hear another episode of SpongeBob. So I go stream and I can talk to the few people that pop on regularly. And, but it inevitably turns into, you know, people ask questions and you're trying to teach things and you get a lot of the same questions again. And, um, as someone who was a musician for years and years, there's a lot of the same factors, like any kind of type of art. And you can know how to play a certain chord, but getting it to ring uh, the way, you know, George Harrison's chords ring mm -hmm. uh, is just time. You know, yeah. it, you can't, there's a lot of muscle memory involved. There's a lot of repetition. And um, I think a lot of people get frustrated because they want those results right away or they want to make a business right away um, because they got some decent results from starting. But the difference between the good results that you get just playing with die and what you see some of these masters get, um, it's a large step. That step doesn't happen overnight. It might look a little bit better, a little details. They might look like minor things, but uh, they are thousands of hours of work in nailing a bunch of little steps. You know, I th think the secret to tie dye there's not one secret that like some of these artists have that if I just knew that mine would look that way. Um, the secret is, is they do a hundred little things correctly. Uh, um, you know, uh, just every little step, right. You know, all the same steps. There's very rarely a secret that you just don't know or can't pick up on or find in, in Facebook groups, and things like that. Um, and when they don't look the same, they feel like I must not have the secret. And it's like, no, you, you have everything you need. Now take each one of those things and try and do it perfect, you know. Right. And do they add up to just a better, a more symmetrical result, a better color, you know, all those things that in, in when all put together <laughs> give you that end result that makes people say, wow. You know? Yeah, it's funny how... Um the slightest change in like dye water composition, uh, how much powder, dye powder you put into your water, uh, especially the thing that I'm really learning this winter is the difference in temperature um, during batching uh, or application. Um, you know, all those things really do play uh, a large part in you know, the whole, like they say, the, the whole is more than just the sum of its parts. You, there's something magical when um, you, you, like you said, play an instrument. You can play the chord, but to really play it beautifully, you, there's, there's, there's soul in there that you, you don't get from just, I'm tying a piece of fabric or I'm laying down some dye. Well, and it's something that you don't necessarily do consciously. You, it, it just happens through repetition, you know? Yeah. 
you don't one day realize that you're making a, a bar chord in a way that rings better. You're just, right. your hands have had the muscle memory. You've had the time right. to build the strength, you know, and it just kind of comes through repetition. So I, I try to encourage people to not think of how do you do something, but like you said, set yourself a goal and say, I want to work on this style. I'm going to buy 30 shirts and do that style and look at each one and say, okay, what do I see that I want to improve on? And there's no way that from shirt one to shirt 30, you're not going to see amazing improvement, you know, but the it hard does... part though is doing that. The hard part is focusing on that one style, that one tie for 30 shirts, especially somebody like me who, you know, I see a squirrel going, I'm like, Oh, I got to grab it. Which, which I see a lot in, in the Facebook community on those on, on Facebook, especially is, you know, the sort of undulating uh, uh, characteristics of the different styles that yeah. are popular, you know, the Kenny style grabbed everybody for a little while. And, you know, right now we're in that hot water irrigation and, you know, the wigwag and, so and hot. ice dying and incline ice dying. And you get this sort of, everybody is kind of meandering through the different styles in basically a 30 day cycle where people right. get a few attempts at it. They either are like, Oh, this is really cool and fun or, Oh, I can't figure this out. And then some artist like yourself pops up and posts this and posts that and like, Hey, isn't this amazing? And then, Oh, tell me how to do it. Tell me how to do it. <laughs> and you know, we kind of get into that, which I, you know, I, I don't knock it. I think it's great to see people getting excited by it. But yeah, at the same they're, they're time, inspired. there's something wrong with that. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's with this tapestry that I'm sending to uh, to this show with glass artists, um, which I wish I could come up with the name right now. Sorry, Regis, but his glass show. Um, <laughs> this one's going to that show, and after I posted it, you know, I got like we all do. All all die artists get that, you know. Hey, how'd you do that tapestry? <laughs> it's like, wow, where do you where do you start, right? You know, there's seven different techniques uh, involved there um, there's liquid dye there's ice dye involved there there's you know so <laughs> that, I think, you know that's just i'll always look at that as you know you are when you get those messages you're you've touched that person you know you've made them say hey i like that i want to make that a part of something i can do that that brought me joy and now i want to be able to create that and um, although people might get tired of that the last thing you want is for people to stop wanting to make your art, you know, uh, it's a compliment every time. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I know some people get frustrated with that sort of stuff, but you know, the last thing you'd want is for it to not be happening, you know? Exactly. And I, I couldn't agree with you more that I, um, those kind of compliments or those kind of questions, uh, depending on where the artist's head is at, I think is really important to see it either as a compliment or, uh, an attempt to 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 um, appropriate, if you will, that style, and I think there's a big difference. You know, a lot. Um, like you said, when I ask an artist, "Hey, how did you do that? Would you be willing to share with me a tip or a trick?" It's because I want to bring somebody as much joy as it brought me. You know, and. Uh, aside from telling a, a potential customer to kick rocks and go buy somebody else's shirt, <laughs> not that I'm trying to make you know a living off of tie dye, but um, it really and it's really more selfish. It's more that I want to be able to look at something that I put together and be like, this is almost as good as the guy that I think is absolutely amazing. Right. You know, people always say, well, I'm inspired by you know, George Harrison, the Beatles are my inspiration or Metallica there. I try to be like James Hetfield and, you know, I try to play like this or I try to play like that. You know, we, we look at this art form and say, I want to look like Forrest or Thomas or Paul or, or Josh's or, you know, whatever. And how do I get to that level? And I think a lot of times uh, what I hear um, from some people is like you said, frustration, um, um, indifference, what have you, but that's not everybody, you know, everybody's a little different. Um, so speaking of inspiration, um, you know, you said you weren't die hard into tie dye, but for a couple of years now, who, who in the beginning was really, uh, somebody that, that you looked up to, I'm sorry, I keep checking on my dogs that are kind of being 
weird it's raining today so <laughs> um who is it that really uh inspired you or kind of nudged you along in in your interest in in this art form well i mean takafumi i've been a fan of his for years you know just as a, someone who appreciates artists you know um uh, long before I got decided, hey, I want to learn and, and learn how to do this and, and express myself with dye art. Um, Takafumi's work has just been monumental, I think, to the tie-dye community. Is, oh, for is sure. Cool. I, don't think, I think if it, artists are doing things they don't even realize are influenced and, and have its roots in some of his work because they've just been influenced by other artists that were influenced by him. Um, you know, so watching, you know, watching Takafumi's work and, you know, really seeing how that influenced uh, Timothy and, and then his growth, which was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Seeing how then Timothy influenced, you know, other artists who are, are currently crushing it. Um, you know, kind of those guys really got me fired up uh, because it was just one of those things where they showed, they, you know, really, how expressive this could be. And then I didn't know it at the time. It wasn't until I got into tie-dye that I learned the other things that I really loved were Paul Kenny's work. Uh, I saw it places, right? But um, I just, for some reason, hadn't come across where the roots of it had come from. Um, and, and Paul has been super supportive of me personally from the beginning. Uh, it sets a great example for the dye community and how he interacts with uh, uh, experts, quote unquote, and new people alike, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so those guys always inspire me. I tend to be drawn to the artists who, um, especially with like Paul and, and Takafumi, not only are they amazing artists, but they're amazing examples uh, for the community, um, right. and how they interact. So, and obviously you can see in my work, it doesn't take, I mean, if you, you don't have to know too much about tie-dye and its history to see how influenced I've been by Takafumi. <laughs> right. You know, but like that, you know, with, with that being said, my goal is never to make a Takafumi style shirt or, or a whatever, or a, a Austin Macarith style shirt or a Timothy style shirt. These guys who are really, um, have, have kind of been pushing the limits for years um, as I was coming into it. And my goal is to, you know, it's like Takafumi's work in the spiral. I, I mean, I spent a whole year just focused on a spiral. That's it. It like, shows. Like, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of hours. And my goal was to say, like, I just wanted to, and I'm actually going through that same process right now with Kenny style, um, which is really exciting to start back at the beginning of one. Um, and, but it, the, my goal is to take it and then learn from like any art form, learn from those who've come before you and then say, okay, now what can I add to the conversation and step out from that? So, you know, if you look back, I know a lot of artists, you know, sometimes get touchy about these things. But if you look back at any of any artist who is um, at this point in time considering themselves to be an original artist, right? Um, you can see exactly who their influences were. Sure. Oh, yeah. The, because that's how it starts. You start by imitating who influenced you. And as you grow confident in that, then you you apply your voice to it. And my I set out with a goal of being able to add some new technique options to uh, the spiral and the the techniques that you see that have come recently in the last you know six months for me have been kind of the fruition of that work and all the other people decide in the community if, if I achieve that or not I don't want to speak to that but I walked away from that work feeling pretty satisfied um, <clears throat> where you could have concrete replicatable uh, techniques that would give you predictable mm -hmm. results yeah. that, that were more than just uh, the fold. Some of it's done through manipulating the folds and some of it's done with dye placement, but 
the goal was it can be replicated, right? I can, right. I can get a look. And that's kind of why I named some of those techniques was to start to hopefully see, help other people recognize, oh, these are the same. You're getting the same kind yeah. of look yeah. because they have a different technique involved with producing it. Yeah, well, I know um, I aspire to some point be able to put my mark on a style. Not that I... Uh, I try not to have the ego to say that I'm going to, or I know I will, and it's going to be the best thing ever. Um, but I, I got to say, I really revel in in a lot of the techniques that you and some of the really uh, accomplished artists uh, are putting out. Not um, um, from a, you know, and I look at it not from like a, a selfish or uh, financial aspect, but really from an artistic fundamental point of uh, these guys are really putting stuff, their heart and soul into their work. Uh, like you said, pushing the envelope of, of what's possible. Um, you well, know. Let me just jump in real quick. And of course. Saying doing all that was, it wasn't about, and this is where I think you see some difference in, in the community is it wasn't for attention or Facebook likes. I only started selling shirts because my wife was like, you have to get these out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about that. Pile up. Um, and, and, you know, I've, I've, with other things I've done in my life, the dying is a hobby. It's, it's not for attention or praise mm -hmm. and, and those sort of things. I appreciate it, but the, you know, the, the need to create and push is just all myself. I'd be doing it if the internet didn't exist and I was just at home and shirts were piling up and I'd have to find a fair or something to sell them at later just right. to get rid of, them. you know, it really, for me, it is, I have to have that challenge and that growth, you know, in my life. And for years it was done through music and, and other things. And, I just want to make sure I, I don't come across as like, hey, I set out to change tie-dye and I did it, pat myself on the back. It's it's more of just how my process works. It's like, okay, what, you know, I set a goal and, and I, I set a challenge for myself. And that's why I leave it to someone else to say if I did or not. It wasn't really about that. It was just my own personal need to to grow as a, as a person. And, and through those sort of challenges, in that that focus on a, on a particular goal is in my life how i've found a more meditative approach to to growth that i apply to other aspects of my life yeah and i i really would um even take that one step further of i think that is the true mindset of a real artist is you're not looking for the praise you're not looking for the reward but you're just, it's, it's that sort of internal need to express yourself or, or occupy yourself in a way that is either creative, uh, just for creativity's sake versus, you know, we can even look at Michelangelo and say, well, he did all this work because he, he was paid tons of money. But when we get back at it, it's like, what does the artist really create is, is, something that that means something to them and hopefully evoke some kind of emotional response from those who happen to see it you know and and um i think some of the best artwork comes out of that uh lack of expectation of of any outside uh adoration um unfortunately we are in that sort of commoditized world now and people immediately go to, uh, uh, you know, well, what is it worth? And how can, you know, how can I translate, the, translate that into finance? Um, um, but again, coming back to that artist mindset is really uh, uplifting. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. that's great. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, I think what makes tie-dye great is you do have that opportunity to, to create and, and push yourself and your technique and your abilities without the need for, uh, you know, it to be a business, you know. There are those out there who are very much uh, on the business side of it and say, I got to make something unique that stands out because I need my uh, style to, to 
nobody else can do so i can sell my shirts for 200 bucks and there's nothing wrong with that either i, I, I honestly i don't think the other side of the coin is good or bad it's just that's a difference in some people yeah no i don't think it's bad i mean i think with any i mean we're yeah. dealing with human beings and we all fight with our own egos you know and in you see it in other art forms and tie dye is no different because it's filled with people yeah, man. But for myself um i found that i do my best work and i'm in my best frame of mind when um i can check that stuff you know yeah, yeah. and realize that other people's success isn't a threat to my worth and i think that at times in any art form uh, that is a natural response for a lot of people. Uh, they're still responding in fear. Uh, mm -hmm. And for me, that hinders my ability to do the best work that I can do um, because I'm too afraid of what others are doing and how it, my perception of how it impacts my worth. And, you know, I, this is just my opinion. So, you know, take them for what they're worth. But I, I honestly believe that other people's success has no impact on, on your self worth. And so the only thing that can start to make your worth be devalued is when you get wrapped in your own head with fear and you start doing things that are now hindering your art. <laughs> and it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, you know? So, so, so true, my man, <laughs> you are a sage among men. <laughs> <laughs> so a um, few more minutes just want to talk because because I do find your style um, unique uh, and, and one of the it really kind of captivates me talk can we talk a little specifically not not sharing you know technique but what so you you went with the spiral for a year why the spiral and why not this or why not that what was it about a specific style that you wanted to grab hold of and make your own. Uh, yeah, I like spirals. <laughs> I mean, kid, when I would draw, you know, there'd be spirals on everything, you know. And uh, I just, aside from tie dye, I just spirals are. They have a. I mean, you go back to some of the most first primitive forms of art on the walls of the cave, and you find a spiral in places. You know, I think there's something about that uh, vortex, that pulling you into the center. That you know, I just, I just prefer and, and, and like. So, I was drawn to artists who uh, really succeeded in spirals. You know, hence my some of my first influences were Takafumi and uh -huh. uh, Timothy. You know, just yeah, yeah. You know, this application of ice on the pleated spiral. He was inspired by Takafumi. I was inspired by him. And so it's just this, this, so I, that I was just drawn to that at a personal preference. And of course, like everyone else, you sit down to try and do it and you realize, oh, this is really hard <laughs> to do correctly. Right. And then my, my OCD competitive part of my brain kicks in. It's like, well, I'm going to, I can do it. I'll do it. I mean, I spent, oh man, I spent, days oh son of a bitch you know and a part of my life you know just, you know I, I i i'm very emotional in my process so my kids and family know when i'm really challenging myself because they can usually hear me from the other room you know oh, dang it, oh, dang it, you know and anytime i'm going through that i know that i'm i'm growing you know because there's some pain involved and i felt that with the pleated spiral and as soon as it frustrated me i had to master the darn thing <laughs> mm, yeah and, and what i and i wanted and i've also loved the the prism color spectrum you know i keep crystals around my house i'm actually working on this with the uh kenny style i don't know if i have one here i can show you in the but i've been practicing so i wanted to implement as much of that rainbow color spectrum into the spiral as I could. And I'm actually working on that with some of these nubs here. Getting yeah. These. Yeah. They, I, you posted yeah. that the other day. Um, this is one. I haven't posted this one yet. This is just one that I've been practicing. Um, you know, it's just part of my practice stuff, but really I see a lot of work I need to do on my time, but I'm also trying to implement 
look, I'm working on this 3D nub yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I want, I want it to look like liquid prism. Like the color just pools like an oil stain, you know? So I will spend weeks. I'm going to spend weeks until I'm happy with, with that to try to add my own kind of look or, or look that I like. <laughs> it has to do with, I'm a, my mind is almost the same way with the, the spiral. I was drawn to it and then I wanted to see what I wanted to get out of it. Um, so I, I love the look of ice dye, but I didn't like the randomness and unpredictability. And besides that, there were people who've already done that as good as it can be done, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. If I hit the best I could do, at best, I'd be right under Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Maximilian, right? right, These right. Guys were just crushing that oh, yeah. ice, um, ice died kind of random placement spiral. So I um, wanted to get more control than that. And I wanted to bring in the full transforming color spectrum. And that's kind of what where I set out my goal. And I find myself already, that's why I showed that little nub, my brain automatically is like, well, how can I do this with with other styles, you know, so I'm starting to try to narrow that down with Kenny and hopefully in six months, I'll have something decent to show there. But uh, I wanted to just really find repeatable way to, to do it. So I made a lot of changes. Um, what people see so I use primarily ice dye in those spirals, right. Um, and there's a lot of misconceptions with ice dye and that it's random and you have no control, uh, that it's, and that's really not the case. You know, when I hear people say that, I just think, okay, good. They, they haven't figured that one out yet. They don't, they don't know everything yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's more of a precision. I've been, I kind of call it precision ice dye, right. Which it has to be in order to get replicatable results. So right. I learned really quickly that, you know, um, all the little things that are important. So precision dye placement, um, really understanding the ratio of dye to water, which is in ice form. So it can be more of a challenge. Uh, it's really easy to put too much ice on a shirt. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people do is just too much ice, keeping your pH level up. And I just got into this, this mindset of wanting to really dial that in. And you can see in my timeline is I started to be like, okay, now I'm keeping my pH right. Here's how much extra I have to add. Here's the ice to dye ratio that's appropriate, how I keep it set on the shirt. All those little boxes started to get checked. And then you start to see those the results, those really repeatable results. And then I had to keep them straight. So I started naming them, you know, and I think I'm up to three or four that I really have liked and repeated time and time again. There's a the vortex spiral which if you look, it really overlaps on itself. Yeah. Um, which is, which I, which is why I gave it that name because it really feels like it's overlapping down towards the center. And then the prism spiral is the one I've been doing the most lately because it reminds me of that. It, it you see the fracture of the color, like you would light through a, a prism. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to give you a long answer to a short question, but no, that's cool. They, uh, Again, you ask why the spiral, and it's like, well, I did it because I was inspired by other artists. And then back to the very first thing we said, I found really quickly that there's this huge rabbit hole to discover before I'm like, okay, have I done what I want to do here? And I'm nowhere to the end of it, but it took me a year and a half just to try all the things I wanted to try to see mm -hmm. what results I got. Um, okay. So it just took that long to do it. And, and the process, my process is not fast. It's not like. Oh, you froze <laughs> up on me there me, for a second. You know, the fold itself. You froze up on me uh -oh. when you said your How process I, is. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Here we go again. Take, take three. No. I was just saying. Um, the process that I go through is it's really slow. It's not a fast process. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm jealous of the hot water folks a little bit. Yeah. Right. Cause they, just, I mean, for me, I, it's about a 12 to 13 hour process to do two or three shirts, just dyeing them. 
Right. So I I go, I'll fold my shirts, I'll get I'll be able with my son to get two done a day or three on a good day. Mm -hmm. uh, then they dry and kind of cure for a week. <laughs> and then when I dye them, you know, in order to get those re uh, repeatable results, it's very slow and methodical dye place. I mean, the dye has to go exactly where it needs to go. It has to be exactly as thick as it needs to be. Um, and that takes, it, it reminds me, I mean, it's a lot, it's very similar to what Justin is doing and it's been showing people with his hot water irrigation. Mm -hmm. Just, he's like fire and I'm like ice, you know? So, you know, a little hint there that there's a very similar processes. And then, but it's like the, you know, the, the Buddhists who lay this, do the sand mandalas, you know? Yeah, where they just sit there and methodically lay that sand out, you know, it's it's like that, and you get it right, and then there's so many places where you can just screw everything up. Then you have to lay slippery ice on it without screwing up the pattern, <laughs> which is like it's just so stressful. Like every time, like you're not, I I don't think a shirt is safe until it's out of the washer. Like it's still screwing Agreed. up. Somehow, Agreed. You know? <laughs> then like i have to watch it right so then i sit and watch how it's melting if it melts and it's done before the ice is done i take it off right yeah. it's not just running through and what happens happens so i really try to make sure that i get as much ice on there as is required to get the dye into the shirt right so as i got better with it i realized that i don't want huge puddles of muck that's not my my style. There's no muck involved. I, I don't mind the muck. I right. embrace. The, it's like a Seinfeld episode. Nothing right. wrong with the muck. You like the muck? You embrace the muck. Right. Um, I've done the muck. I've, I've done. The muck. I'm done with the muck, though. <laughs> I, you know, um, I keep all mine on a rack so they drain. And there's very little water on the bottom when I'm done because I've just got the process down so much that I have the amount of ice necessary. I want all that dye in the shirt, not. Right wasted in the bottom going down the drain right and that leads to the vibrancy that, that you see in some of those you know along with the batch process and the temperature but that that thought process that started with why spirals that's the kind of i'm sure other dyers can relate that's the snowball that happens that, that leads you down the rabbit hole that is tie-dye which is what is so amazing about it wow. and i think that if those sort of spiraling questions of every single little step aren't going through your process that might be why you're not seeing some of the results you want to see bingo you know? <laughs> it's a thousand little things you know yeah yeah so wow. forest amazing uh ye, that last 10 minutes of listening to you describe your ice process i'm i'm afeard of what i'm gonna step into myself <laughs> I like to just load mine up with ice and be like, eh, whatever happens, happens. I'm that kind of dyer. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, not. It just depends on what your end goal is, you know? Right. If, if you want right. something specific, you have to have a very specific process. Right. You know? No, for sure. For sure. I can totally appreciate that. Um, I well, love the first thing when he talks about his spray and pray method, you know? It's just, I know. Every time I bring that up with another artist, they're either, yeah, I totally get it, or, yeah, I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> I've done it. I just don't get the magic he does. Right, <laughs> like, right. Yeah, no I kidding. The spray and pray because mine looks more like I, you know, pepper sprayed it and clubbed it. You know. What right. I mean? Well, again, it goes back to what you were saying. It's you know, he's got thirty years of spray and pray where his spray is a little more laser focused than what a spray to you and me might mean. You know. Exactly. He can. And he I'll, can do it at that level. I'll be honest, my best Kenny style shirt that I like was a spray and pray where I really didn't get, I had kind of a vision of where I wanted it to go and I kind of stuck with it. But for the most part of the shirt, I sprayed and prayed and it turned out really, really cool. Could I repeat that? Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know, those guys are at a point where they know how to tie up the shirt in 10 minutes, which takes me like three or four days. They know how to spray and pray in a way that's going to produce something that they're thinking of, you know, and that's totally fine. That's great. They deserve that. They've worked for it. You know, I was talking, we were talking to Thomas the other night 
who you've had on a bunch, you know, he was, I was feeling like it, you know, it takes me a few hours to tie one of those shirts. And I did feel better hearing him talk about how he would obsess and spend an hour and a half just on the first row. You know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's it. You know, that's what it's about. It's for him, not to speak for him, but you hear that theme with the artists that are successful is that the, the project takes the time that it takes. Yep. If you're, are you making a product or are you making an art project? Art, exactly. And neither one are wrong. It's just, which are, which are you doing? Yep. Uh, but I think where people's frustration comes in is they're trying to do high level art at quick product sales. Time. At craft speed. At craft speed. Yeah. And then, no, you don't realize that those artists put, you know, 17 hours into yeah. that. Into a piece. I have a shirt. This shirt I just did. This guy. I got uh, this one here. I posted this one. Oh, yeah. Any mandala, you know. Yeah. Right front and back. Ten hours almost just on that one shirt. Oh, yeah. For sure. Those aren't so, easily those aren't easily accomplished results. Yeah. I mean, my best shirts are always a multi-hour fold, a yeah. multi-hour dye, and then you know just that's and exactly. the shirts that I can you know I can bang out the tie in you know 15, 20 minutes, and the dye placement is going to be another half an hour. The time really comes in the batch, and it's it's great. It looks good, but you know it's not like. Oh, he was super meticulous on every piece of that. So it shows. Yeah. Now, some of some people can do that. I just I can't personally. <laughs> but I think those of you out there who want to see better, and I know we're wrapping up, but you know, take the time. If you want to just see where you're at as an artist, you know, do that with one shirt. Commit a day or two days to one shirt. Mm -hmm. If you've never done that. Yeah. And do every single step as meticulously and as perfect. To you as you can yep. and see how they the, that shirt looks different than the ones you did before and mm -hmm. if you're happier with it then take all those steps that took you two days and instead of shortcutting how perfect those steps are just learn how to do them perfectly more more quickly right, yep. right? and you'll start to see some improvement and you know that's what's great about this art form is it really is i believe accessible to to everybody yeah uh, so thanks for letting me on and thanks for letting me share Forrest, man, it's been awesome talking to you and getting to know you a little bit. I think you and I are very similar in mindset, not only about this craft, but art as a whole um, and, and our ego placement, as it were. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on. I really look forward to seeing your progression uh, and keeping an eye on, on your work because it is uh, exciting to see. So keep it up, buddy. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Man, and, and thanks for bringing some attention to the dye world and, and some of these artists they deserve attention these guys you have lined up or you know i know they've made my life better yeah uh, they deserve a little credit uh, so it's really cool to see them get a get a moment to talk and it's a treat for the rest of us to get to watch it awesome well thanks again all right everybody uh forrest lee uh, Ananda Dies on Instagram and Facebook, I believe. Um, I'll make sure in the description, I'll have everything posted down there so you can follow Forrest and his artist progression. I uh, just want to say a thank you to everybody who's been watching the videos. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and we'll get uh, more interviews uh, out to you as soon as I can. And uh, love you guys for being out there in the, in the tie-dye world. And thanks for being a part of the tie-dye mindset. Peace.